So hello troglodytes. Today we're going to be looking at is a 5950X CPU worthwhile in 2024? Let's get into it. So I recently purchased a 5950X as I said in the intro and I want to see was that a good purchase or not? Will it actually you know be beneficial for my workflow which is primarily on this computer anyway doing uh, video editing tasks and the like and yeah so i set about benchmarking and making this video about it in here i decided to do a little time lapse of me uh removing the old cpu my old 5800 x3d and 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz ddr4 memory and upgrading to a 5950x obviously so that i can make this video and have a 16 core cpu in my system Man, the prices on these used CPUs are friggin' weird. We'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, the problem with this Be Quiet cooler I have is that if I want to do anything, like anything, that isn't just messing with PCIe devices or uh, NVMe, I have to take the entire motherboard out so that I can take the CPU cooler out. Or well, I take the CPU cooler off, then I have to take the whole motherboard out. It's a whole, it's a, it's a, it's a whole thing, um, because you can't put the CPU cooler back on while it's in the case because clearance issues, and you can't get to the fan thing, and you can't screw it down properly. Oh my god, this is why giant air coolers are kind of annoying, um, because you have to do this. <laughs> Anyway, there we go. I had to fight one of the motherboard screws. Got caught in a standoff. That was awkward. So, goodbye, upper left-hand standoff. Uh, we don't we don't need you anymore, do we? So, there we go. We're almost done putting her back together. And you know, it's always kind of nerve-wracking when you're doing this. It's like, oh no, did I bend on the board too much? Oh god, is it gonna work? All right, here's the moment of truth, boys. Will it turn back on again? All right, turning it back on for the first time. That's a good sign. Fan spin, that's good. That's also maybe a good sign. Yep, the fans are spinning. Memory training, so yep. kind of memory training takes a while, yep. That's a good sign. Yep, that's a good sign, that's a good sign. Oh wait, okay, getting to the BIOS, finally. Okay, we cut out the memory training part because editing. Okay, the dance of the BIOS. Which button is it? Is it delete or is it F2? I don't know. Is it gonna turn on? The suspense is killing me! We have a BIOS screen. Yes! Yeah, baby! Victory is very excited at this point, you know? Because again, it's nerve wracking. It's like, is it gonna work or not? Did we break it? We have to do the Jeff Gearling red shirt zoom here. The, the, second, the second channel zoom. And focus the camera. There we go, baby, 5950X and 128 gigabytes of RAM. All right, so up first is the Blender benchmark. This is the Blender renderer you know and love, but condensed down into a super simple application that just renders out three scenes and gives you a score. So it's super easy, super handy, and I used it here. So looking at the actual benchmark charts here, everything is compared to the 5950X because that is the star of the show. And the 5950X is about 75% faster than the 5800X3D in Blender. About 12 times as fast, 12 and a half times as fast as the 7300U from The Lap, if you remember my previous video. Yeah, we always knew that thing was not production capable, but oh my, is that thing slow. <laughs> oh boy. So, the uh, 5950X is about 2.3 times faster than the 7840U from my laptop, from my uh, Framework 13, also featured in the previous video. I just thought it'd be interesting to bring these into the mix, because um, why not? You know, more points of comparison more data points, more architectures, more use cases. It's pretty neat. And then finally, I have the um, 5950X with Precision Boost Overdrive and 3200 megahertz RAM, because when I initially did my testing, I had that enabled, I found that wasn't stable, and then I just went back to stock for the rest of my testing. 
and enabling PBO and the faster RAM speeds netted me an extra 4%. Not worth it in my opinion. Alright, so up next is Handbrake. This is a video transcoding application. It allows you to, you know, compress video files to transcode them into a more efficient format. So for instance, for my um, benchmark I ran, I took my previous video, the how to edit, or what do you need for editing 4K video, it's been a while, and I transcoded that from its original 4K60 H.264 to 4K60 H.265. It's a 10 minute video file, it made for a good benchmark. Now. We can see that the 5950X performed 5.5 minutes faster than the 5800X 3D and 20 minutes faster than the 7840U, which is pretty good. So it's a bit faster than my old CPU, but it is faster and it's dramatically faster than my laptop, which I expected. All right, so up next is our Caden Live Timeline Preview Render Test. And this is the footage that we're rendering out here. It's um, a fairly simple scene that gets complicated here. We have the green screen on the computer monitor. And it's just kind of a real world use case because on the timeline, this would be really, really slow for Premiere or for anything. Um, so you want to render it out so it plays back smoothly. Now, the faster you can render this out, the better. Because that means the, you know, you can actually play back that clip and look at it and make changes and stuff. So and you're going to be doing this all the time. So you move files around or move footage around or add effects or change things. You have to re-render parts of it. So the faster you can do this, the better. And that's why this is important to benchmark. So as you can see from these results, the 5950X is about 30 seconds faster at rendering out this 30 second clip than the 5800X3D and is about a minute faster than the 7840U. Which is good because again, the faster you can render these out, the faster you can get back to working. So last but not least is the Caden Live Final Export Benchmark where we're exporting that 30 second clip from the previous benchmark that we just rendered on the preview rendered on the timeline. And the 5950X is about 15 seconds faster than the 5800X 3D and 16 seconds faster than the 7840U, which isn't huge. I would expect it to be like twice as fast because it has twice as many cores, but software in the real world doesn't scale how you'd hope it would. So it is faster. And that's good, I guess. To conclude, is the 5950X worth it in 2024? Well, that depends if you already bought into the AM4 platform, you already have a compatible CPU cooler, motherboard, RAM, power supply, that kind of stuff. And you want to do production workloads on the cheap. Because again, this isn't a gaming CPU. If you want gaming, you go for the 57 or 58 or 56 or 5500 X3Ds. Why they keep releasing more, I don't know. I guess they just have a lot of overstock in the 5800 X3D and they want to flush through all the bins, I guess. Anyway, you, you get one of the X3D parts if you just want to do gaming, but because they have the, because of the 3D V cache and the slightly reduced clock speeds, they aren't as good for productivity as we've seen here. Again, the 5950X is better in single core, slightly, so it has the higher boost clocks, and it's dramatically better in all core workloads, because you know, 16 cores versus eight. So yeah, I'd say it's worth it if you can get it for a good price, and you're already bought into the AM4 platform. All right, bye.